Welcome back to the channel. We have this interesting question that says find the value of x in this equation. Now questions like this, it is either we rearrange them or not. So how do we know if we're going to be rearranging or not? We consider the first two terms and then the second two terms. Good. For the first two terms, which is this and this, 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, 3 plus 4 is 7. So, they don't have anything in common. So, let me combine this and the third term. So, 1 plus 3 is 4. And then let me combine this to the last term. 2 plus 4 is 6. They don't also have anything in common. Now, let me compare the first term and the last term. So, 1 plus 4 is 5. And then let me compare this to 2 plus 3 is also 5. So, we have something common. 5. Very good. So, that means I'm going to be rearranging this times this, which is x plus 1 times x plus 4. Very good. And then this times this, which is x plus 2 times x plus 3. And this is equal to 120. Now let's expand each terms. So I'll start with this first two. So x times x is x squared. Now to get the coefficient of x, 1 plus 4, that is 5. So this will be plus 5x. And then 1 times 4 is 4. Very good. And then for this other one, x times x is x squared. To get the coefficient of x, 2 plus 3 is 5, so this will be plus 5x. And then 2 times 3 is 6, so plus 6. Very good. And this is equal to 120. Good. Now notice that from these two brackets, we have x squared plus 5x common. So we can introduce substitution by saying that let x squared plus 5x, let me write let here, let x squared plus 5x, but there is something. Look at 4 and 6. 5 is in their middle, so I'm going to be adding that 5 to it. Very good. So let x squared plus 5x plus 5 be equal to u. Now, rewriting these expressions, you notice that this will be u. When I subtract 1 from u, I get this, so minus 1. Very good. Times... Now, for this other expression, this will be u. And when I add 1 to u, I get this expression. Very good. And this is equal to 120. Now, notice that we have difference of two squares here, which is u squared minus 1 equal to 120. Very good. Now, I'm going to be moving negative 1 to the right-hand side so that I have u squared to be equal to 120 plus 1. So this becomes u squared equal to 121. And taking the square root of both sides, we're going to have plus or minus the square root of 121. So this square root cancels out the square, leaving behind u to be equal to plus or minus. Now the square root of 121 is 11. So we have u to be plus 11, or u to be negative 11. Now we're going to be plugging this back to what we have here. So let's do that. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 5 equal to u. u here is 11. Then for the other one, we have x squared plus 5x plus 5 equal to u here is negative 11. So now let's start with this. So this is x squared plus 5x plus 5. When 11 crosses to the left, it becomes negative 11. And this is equal to 0. So simplifying further, x squared plus 5x. Now 5 minus 11 is minus 6. And this is equal to 0. Very good. Well, we can factorize this quadratic equation. The factors that we're going to be looking for two numbers that multiplies to give negative 6 and that add up to 5. And the two numbers I have in mind are 
6 and negative 1. So I'll multiply two brackets together and equate them to 0. Now to get x squared, I'll multiply x times x. Now write down the factors. This is plus 6 and this is minus 1. So we have two cases. We have x plus 6 to be 0 or we have x minus 1 to be 0. For the first case, the value of x will be as 6 crosses to the right, that is negative 6. For the second case, the value of x will be as negative 1 crosses to the right, it becomes 1. So we've got two values of x from here. Now let's come back to what we have here. We're going to be using or moving negative 1 to the left hand side so that we have x squared plus 5x plus 5. And as negative 11 crosses, it becomes plus 11. And this is equal to 0. So this simplifies into x squared plus 5x. Now 5 plus 11 is 16. And this is 0. So we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. So a here is 1, b is 5, and c is 16. Now substituting into the quadratic formula, we have x to be equal to, so this will be values of 3 and 4. This is the first value, this is the second value. So this is minus b, so that will be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that is 5 squared minus 4 times a times c, that is 16, all over 2 times a, that is 2 times 1. So simplifying further, we're going to have the value of x to be equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times 1 times 16 is 64 all over 2 times 1, that is 2. So this becomes x equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 64 is negative 39 all over 2. Very good. And then finally, we have the value of x to be equal to negative 5 plus or minus. Now, since I have negative inside of a square root, that means I'm going to be having a complex solution. So this will be the square root of 39i. Very good all over 2. So let's separate them. So one of the values is negative 5 plus the square root of 39i all over 2. And then the last value is negative 5 minus the square root of 39i all over 2. Very good. So we have four solutions in total. Two real solutions and two complex solutions. Well, Feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.